I've been uh, saying to people is, is that, you know, we've got more breweries per capita than anywhere else in the country. You know, so think about that for a second. We've got, you know, we're producing more beer per person in the state than like some people, you know, some places that are known for beer in Europe. So um, when you look at, you know, the overall impact of the, uh, the breweries in the state, um, as far as a uh, tourism magnet, you know, I, I, I'm telling people, you know, we're the Disneyland of beer here. You know, we've got breweries at every corner of the state. There's more coming every day. And, you know, it's just a matter of time before, you know, people used to come to Vermont for Ben and Jerry's and, you know, maple syrup and milk. You know, I'm saying in another 10 years, they're coming for the beer. They're coming for the beer now. And Vermont is, is uh, this small set of people who love to, I think, to do stuff on their own the DIY lifestyle and I think craft beer is is in some way an art form. You can do it on the big scale that we're at but you can also do it at the small scale of in your closet with a couple of water jugs. Um, so I think that aspect along with the variety of things that you can do with it. I mean you can have the lightest of light beers to the darkest of dark and in between is there's so much. I think that's the biggest thing about craft beer is the variety that you can create. This is a, a, a state that has dedicated beer drinkers and beer makers. You know, we've been, you know, Vermont has, um, I mean, we certainly didn't start the craft brewing revolution by any means, but, you know, there are a couple of places that were, were up and running here pretty early on. Craft breweries, um, the industry of that is booming right now. There seems to be a constant influx of new breweries popping up all over, and Vermont's no exception. Yeah. I like to, to keep it local, and I feel like some of the best breweries in the country are here in Vermont. You know, um, nothing's better than like a nice cold long trail at the end of a big bike ride, or while you're fishing, or after skiing, and um, that's, that's typically what I associate it with. Our beer sales just February to February, just in this last month, we're up 28% over last year. Something's going on around here, and we're very excited about it. The other thing with craft beer is it's, it's just, it's hot right now. People, people want to drink craft beer, they want to drink the next new product, they want to experiment. All you need is four ingredients and you're rolling, you know, so uh, you got your water, you got your hops, you got your malt, you got your yeast, and next thing you know, you got some great libations. So. If you look at the overall beer market, uh, which includes everybody, uh, there's less, less people drinking beer and less beer being produced in this country. Uh, but if you look at craft beer, on the other hand, you know, we're on the verge of busting 10% of the market. You know, we're not there yet. Um, here in Vermont, it's a little different. Um, we're, we're told uh, by you know, some of the big brewers in the state that the uh, market share that we have here in Vermont uh, package stores, they say, is something like 20%, which is huge. We run this program that uh, folks run around the state and they get uh, stamps in their passport. And uh, that's grown at this point to over 600 redemptions a year. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, it, it's, it started out, I think the first year we did it, we had 75 people turn in their cards. And uh, last year we had 609. Uh, and we're already on a pace this year, you know, looking at the end of the first quarter, that, uh, that we'll see more than 600 this year. And the irony here is, is, is that it, get, it gets harder to do. When I first started with the association and the fast first passport, there were only 16 breweries on it. You know, the second one had 18 breweries on it. The one that we just put out has got 24 breweries on it. So it's getting harder to do, and more people are doing it. In the summertime, we have people lined up to get the, the stamps. I mean, it's, it's and, and they and you look at their their uh, uh, passports, and they they've been to half or three quarters of the breweries already. It's a very popular program. And I guess you know, for a person like myself who likes likes not just making beer, but you know, drinking great beer, uh, it's very gratifying to see that people are more and more uh, people are becoming not just aware, but also huge fans of the products. Um, you know, I've been in the industry for more than 20 years, so I can recall a time when 
brewing craft beers was, you know, people didn't know what they were. You know, so there was a lot of selling that needed to take place. Uh, you know, people thought of beer as, um, you know, yellow, a yellow liquid like Bud Budweiser. Um, in fact, in, if you go into the visitor center, you can see uh, in the can collection, there is a generic beer can. It just says beer in kind of a, you know, like an Arial font or something like that. It doesn't have a brand. It doesn't have a type. Uh, there was a time not that long before I started where that was, you know, accept, an acceptable, you know, a supermarket could have generic beer. Nowadays, you, people are interested in different types, different flavors. So it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more interesting marketplace. And for a person like myself that likes, likes great beer and likes to make beer, it's just a great time to be in the industry. Vermont is a great place to open up craft breweries. There's a great beer culture here. But there's a, there's a really good um, uh, uh, fan base with great knowledge of what good beer is and what it, and what it should be. Um, they're adventurous. They try all kinds of different uh, beers. And um, you know, that lets us try all kinds of different beers. So there's, I mean, there's just a great cross-section um, throughout, throughout New England especially, I think, in Vermont, of, uh, of, of breweries going from everything from, uh, you know, little places like us where we're running on a 10-barrel system uh, to having places like Long Trail and Magic Hat, you know, which are obviously much bigger operations, and there's everything in between. One of the things that's very interesting in my observation, I have kids that are in their 20s. They will not go near a traditional beer. They only drink craft brew, and all their friends do. I mean, this is the way they are. You know, it's almost like they all have iPhones. They all drink craft beers, and it's it's the new generation has moved to this genre of beer drinking. But uh, yeah, in general, I mean, it's growing. You talk to people. There's more and more people that are drinking it. More and more people are liking it. And uh, you know, for every small fraction of industrial beer decline, you know, it's huge growth for craft beer. So we still have a long ways to go, but people are starting to see the light, and they're they're enjoying it. And you're now seeing craft do steadily increasing. And uh, I, us especially, we're doing very well. We're churning out a lot of beer in this place. And with such a small facility, we're busting at the seams, but it's, it's awesome because of the amount. I mean, we have two docks in the back and we're shipping 10 to 15 trucks a day, full trucks. It's, it's exciting to be a part of. Um, and the homebrew industry we've seen here is just incredible compared to other areas that I've lived. Um, it seems like everyone enjoys craft beer in the state a lot more than your typical macro Bud Miller cores. Um, and people just enjoy making them and learning about it. It seems like a great spirit in the state of do it yourself. And that just carries over into the beer. I think just the people in Vermont in general like, work really hard. So I think that's, that's, that's definitely a huge role in, in the fact that craft brewing has taken off in Vermont. People here are very accepting of things that are made locally so that's a very it's a cool thing to be a part of and I think it makes it a, a good place to brew because people are always trying to experiment and kind of push the limit to see see what's up next. In Vermont there's always been this commitment to buy local products um, that's why Ben and Jerry's took off it's you know it's it's the reason any Vermont product tends to do well with Vermonters. We are committed to buying local stuff. You know, it's it, the local VOR movement started a long time ago, and when the beers came along, it just became another element of the local VOR movement. You can spend a lifetime experimenting, you know. There's so many wonderful beers out there now, but you know, we've gotten to a point here in Vermont where there's just so many great beers, you don't even have to leave the state anymore. People that live here like the good things in life, you know? I mean, we, we like fresh air, we like the outdoors, you know? We got a lot of great cheeses, there's a lot of great restaurants, there's uh, a lot of great beers, foods. People here, I think, just appreciate finer things in life, more quality life, you know? And some of the folks in other areas, uh, you know, they may appreciate them as well, but, you know, we're living it. There's certainly a culture up here of, of uh, buying local products and buying better products, you know, uh, and I think that kind of fits in with the local, um, you know, I think people tend to eat and they don't buy Wonder Bread, they buy bread from a local bakery or, you know, like more, uh, more authentic, you know, 
hearth baked breads and uh, coffees and cheeses and there's some wineries and cideries up here now uh, and I think people up here locals look for it and I think people that come to visit the state look for it as well they think of Vermont as a place where craft products are made um, quality craft products so it seems to fit the culture really well um, you know and there's a lot of people up here that like good beer I think that Vermont has the type of people that have a very sophisticated taste, not only with their beer, but also with their wine and their cheeses and their food. And it just goes along with that whole culture um, of having developed taste and wanting to have you know, food that tastes really good and, and beers that taste really good. I think that everybody in Vermont is tired of the same old bland thing. People just like to do things themselves. I think it's kind of the spirit of our state and uh, just carries over into beer. People do like the beer up here, so. Vermonters are, I think, pretty independent and do tend to just kind of do what it takes to get it done. It's better than like a hard day at work and like rewarding yourself with some beer that you made. People like to go out and taste something, see if they can make it. If they like it, they can modify it a little bit. It's, Beer is, beer is beautiful, man. It's, it, that's so nice. It's so nice that you can do stuff like that. I mean, it, you know, Vermont Pub Brewery started it all. Uh, they were the, uh, they raised the bench, you know, raised the bar, and uh, ever since, uh, you know, Greg Noonan, since he passed, there's, uh, you know, a lot of people following in his footsteps and really getting out there, and, uh, you know, it, it's, everybody's trying to outdo each other, not, you know, in a way, it's a friendly competition, you know, uh, just, it's just the uh, complexity and, like, pretty much the craziness of all the people around here, so. It's, it's really funny. If there's one characteristic that they all share, it's people, it's people who have known what to do with a recipe and be able to tweak any recipe they get, whether it's food, whether it's beer, and tweak that recipe just enough to make it their own. And yeah, there's your Vermont Brewer. But I, like to, I do like to experiment, and, and with our small system here, it's a lot of fun to always change certain ingredients a little bit of your hops or your, your malt and you can always experiment as a brewer it's a lot of fun to make things on such a small level because it always comes out different. I certainly do love uh, brewing beer and talking about it and consuming it. It's been a big part of my life for I don't know, like 20 odd year, 21, 22 years now um, and I just you know I didn't always have the time necessary to be able to you know homebrew here it's you know I'm thinking about beer all the time just taking those raw materials and putting them together and, and coming out with something that's you know it's pretty good I don't get to homebrew much anymore if at all but um, I just love that whole process and I love the glass carboys and being able to see the actual live active fermentation you know I mean, these stainless steel are great for, for craft, brewer, uh, craft breweries because they're easy to clean and they're, you know, they're design specific, a lot easier to clean than a carboy, but you don't get to see what's going on in there. You know, when that's fermenting, it's a live, living process. You know, that beer inside the tank is just churning from the bottom of that cone, you know, 25 feet up in the air and back down again. I mean, it's just moving and churning and creating the CO2 and then, of course, alcohol as well. So. It's fun, but yeah, that's, that's what I love about the brewing end of it. But yeah, it's all a challenge, uh, but it's fun. It's, you know, it's a rewarding challenge because you get to have the beer at the end. Uh, when you're brewing beer down, you know, there's forever people poking their head in and, you know, the downtime is filled up with talking, you know, you get the, you know, get little mini tours and stuff while you're, you know, during the brew day and, and uh, you know, people uh, love, you know, you find a lot of people love to talk about beer and, and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good topic. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. If I could do a uh, uh, more of a production brewery type of situation and be left alone to do the brewing, I would relish that opportunity. A lot of it's the camaraderie and the people that I get to work with here at Magica and also outside of the brewery, uh, whether it be just beer drinkers at you know a beer festival or you know other brewers within the state. You know, it's, there's a lot of there's a big community feeling among other craft brewers and that's just, it's, it's really enjoyable to be able to go to work and you know if you have a problem or a question that you can call a guy down the road at a quote unquote competing brewery and see what they did, 
But as brewers, we all really respect and appreciate each other for what it takes day to day to make good beer. You 20-somethings have been, uh, you know, in, 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 in this renaissance of beer where, you know, when I grew up it was Budweiser and Miller and, you know, Coors, Coors if you could get it, you know, it never came east to the Mississippi. Yeah, you know, this is, this is a, a wild independence associated with uh, Vermont and the Vermont culture. I, I think that uh, the, the idea of a quality crafted product is so Vermont. I mean, it could have been invented here. You go to any one of these breweries and, and they're more than willing to help you learn about it. It's a very exciting time to be a beer drinker. Uh, the beers are, are out of this world. I mean, every day you think you've tasted the best beer you'll ever have. You know, another week later you're going to taste another one that's, that's on your desert island list. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just a great time to be involved with craft beer. And, I, you know, I, I consider it an honor and a pleasure to be able to, you know, just rub shoulders with these guys that I've considered like rock stars in my world. I think you'll find some folks who are maybe going to open up a small brewery or brew pub, maybe even maybe even like a part-time kind of thing, you know, because I think that, um, you know, some people paved the way for them to be able to do that. Essentially, they're like big homebrew operations. And many years ago, I don't think you would have seen um, somebody take a chance to try to get a business going with such a small system. But I think that people are, are kind of proving that you can. You, you, you really can make a go of it. We believe that both Vermont and our, our beer in particular will grow as this beer movement continues to expand. There's a, a lot of breweries, uh, you know, for, the, for a small little state, but I think that there's enough, there's enough support that we, they can just, I think they can just keep growing. You know, I think every, every uh, little, little village can, can probably pretty much have its own brewery. If you get a person that wants to do it because they love it, it'll succeed. If you get somebody who's doing it because they want to make money, well, good luck. <laughs> it's pretty exciting as a brewer because just in the last 10 years, uh, what people are willing to experiment with and try is much different than it, than it was, say, 10 years ago. So, you know, nowadays you can make a beer with dandelions in it, and no one's going to scoff at it. They're going to say, oh, I, I'd like to try that. I'm hopeful because I love great beer that that uh, the more and more people will be, you know, converted to drinking what we call real beer. But uh, you know, people are interested in more high-quality products. Um, it's in my mind, it's interesting if you think about it from the other perspective. Like, why did they get away from that in the first place? Because uh, you know, historically, there were a lot of different styles of beer. You know, and at some point, just American culture moved to you know moved towards standardization of things um, and mass production. I don't know, you know, it's, like to me a bigger question is why that happened and you know why we moved away from from quality crafted products in the first place. Um, <laughs> do I love beer? I hate it. I think it's awful. I mean the worst job in the world and now I'm just open yeah. awesome <laughs> thanks I kind of get my brewing fix you know Monday through Friday do you want me to do like the repeat the question in the in the answer okay okay I'm a professional yeah I I, I think it's so oh, oh wait she might have she might have hit it inside perfect it's comfortable and quiet. There's no clanking of bottles. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty intensely loud. Should we? Does that music matter? Yeah, the music's fine, right? Yeah, you can't really hear it. What's little a... little Marvin Gaye background. <laughs> yeah. Nothing compared to some of those more extreme ones where you drink it, and you're just like, I don't know, I like it. It gives you a very elated feeling as well. Game. Yeah, that's your favorite part. <laughs> Um, I think drinking beer is my favorite part. <laughs> um, yeah. I wish you guys could see me drinking a beer right now. That's a that's a great great beer, and it has a uh, looks like a college composition notebook, the label. So uh, hopefully all your uh, classmates will drink that while they're studying. Uh, my favorite beer of all time. 
probably Genesee. <laughs> um, Except when they pay, play beer pong, where they really need a light beer, just so they can consume enough to make it through the night alive. Can I do it again? Hello, hello. I like beer, a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's, we're saying Are you guys 21? <laughs> Let's go grab a beer.